So, meet the person who is most to blame for everything that happens in this game. And pretty much the series. There were certainly other people involved as well, but Dahlia Gillespie was the mastermind behind all of it. Herein lies the mother's womb, containing the power to create life. She originally shows up in the Balkan church, spouting a bunch of nonsense, which she does a lot of in this game. A lot of it makes sense as you go along, but some of it doesn't. By the way, nice spelling error. The time is nay! Believe it or not, she's supposed to be 46 when this game takes place. To help put that in perspective, I just turned 40, so she has seen some shit. When she was 32, she had a kid who, from very early on, showed signs of telekinetic powers, which reminded her of the dark god that her cult worshipped. So she figured her daughter Alessa would be a good vessel to birth their god. So she used a ritual of some kind to impregnate her. During the ritual, a fire was started, which burned down the house with Alessa inside. There's an article you can find in the game stating that it was believed to have been caused by the malfunction of an antiquated boiler, but I think it's more likely a cover-up by the cult, and she was burned intentionally as part of the ritual. Yeah, Dahlia's about the nastiest antagonist in the series, alongside Dr. Kaufman. She does eventually get at least a smidge of what's coming to her in the end. She also helped to set the events of Silent Hill 4 in motion, since apparently she was the one who told Walter Sullivan that he could wake his mother by completing the 21 sacraments. Apparently this was to be a backup plan in case things didn't work out with Alessa. Dahlia was named after a former girlfriend of horror film director Dario Argento, whose name was actually Daria, whoops. Her last name may have come from a character in Stephen King's Salem's Lot. But Dahlia did not work alone. Dr. Michael Kaufman had ties with the cult. Alessa survived being burned and was kept alive for seven years with a combination of magic and medicine. Kaufman kept her in the basement of Alcamilla Hospital and forced Lisa Garland to care for her, and then he basically didn't allow her to quit. Kaufman isn't really that interesting. I mean, it's shocking to learn that he's a doctor and he's using that medical knowledge in such a messed up way. Oh, what the hell. There's just something so unsettling about a deranged doctor. Something about all that knowledge of human anatomy being put in the wrong hands. Not totally appropriate, but I never get tired of referencing Dr. Faustus. Anyway, other than his part in the game's backstory, he's not that interesting. This is actually the only case where I preferred the version of the character that was in Origins. Try harder. He had a quiet creepiness to him that I totally dug. Time to put her paw to sleep. Good night. Here he just sounds kind of cold and proper. Did you see those monsters? Have you ever seen such aberrations? Ever even heard of such things? He's always in this perpetual state of urgency though, which amuses me for some reason. I can't just sit around here doing nothing. This isn't the time to stand around flapping our gums. You shouldn't be hanging around here goofing off. Until he gets really mad and then he starts sounding like the shop teacher from South Park. Quit screwing around. Hey, don't screw around. You screw around too much. And he's even more trigger happy than Richard Braintree. <gasps> at least he didn't actually shoot at Henry. Either way, he's a total scumbag and definitely gets what's coming to him at the end. <laughs> Dr. Michael Kaufman's name is an amalgam of the names of two producers from Troma Studios. Also, Kaufman in German means seller, dealer, or businessman, which references both his drug dealing and his businessman-like appearance. Oh, good lord, Alessa. Even before the ritual, she had a rough time of it. Not only did the kids at school bully her, but it's hinted at that she was also abused by Dahlia. According to one of her teachers, her expression was, quote, pitifully dark for a six-year-old. And then the ritual happened, leaving her in excruciating pain for seven years as she suffered from third-degree burns all over and impregnated with a god that she couldn't deliver, so it ate away at her from the inside, causing not only pain but horrible nightmares for seven years. Needless to say, she went insane and essentially lashed out, her powers awakening the negative energy already present in the town from all the tragedies that had happened in the past, causing those nightmares to manifest themselves. Screw it. Silent Hill 2 actually expands on those past tragedies a lot. She had also split her soul in two, the second part manifesting itself as a baby that was found on the side of the road by Harry Mason and his wife, who they adopted and named Cheryl. She lived as a normal, happy kid, which is what Alessa wanted, for at least part of her to be happy for a while. But after seven years of suffering, Alessa wanted to end it, so she summoned her other half, Cheryl, 
so they could become one again and Alessa could end her life. But that was also what Dahlia wanted because God could not be born unless Alessa was whole. Alessa and Cheryl do re-merge and end up under Dahlia's control. In the good endings, Dr. Kaufman throws Aglaophotis on Alessa, causing God, or the Incubus, to emerge from her prematurely. Daddy. Once Incubus is killed, Alessa dies as well, but not before reincarnating her whole self as a baby, which she gives to Harry. I think once she merged with Cheryl, she gained some of her memories and she recognizes Harry as the loving father figure she didn't have as Alessa, and she wants to experience that herself. Of course, that baby grows up to be Heather, and see my videos on Silent Hill 3 to see the rest of that story. One thing I'm pretty sure I didn't touch on in those videos, though, is that Alessa does show up in Silent Hill 3 in the form of a boss. She tries to kill Heather to spare her and others from further pain after God is born. Afterwards, Heather remarks that she doesn't really consider her and Alessa to be the same being since they don't think alike, despite that she has regained Alessa's memories. But yeah, it sucks to be Alessa. One thing I didn't like about both the movie and Origins is that they painted Alessa as spiteful and malevolent. Especially in the movie where she goes on a bloody murderous rampage with barbed wire tentacles. Granted, maybe that works with the movie's story, which involves an entire town of people turning on a seven-year-old for no reason. I'd be pretty pissed off about that, too. But it was still over the top and ridiculous, in my opinion, especially since I didn't even like the story leading up to that point. Anyway, while she certainly has reason to be angry and vengeful, I never saw her that way in the first game. And that's actually part of what I liked about her. She does become a little more aggressive towards Harry as the story progresses, but really, she's just trying to slow him down because she doesn't want him to reach Cheryl. In the game, she's mostly focused on reaching her goal, which is rejoining with Cheryl and ending her life. That's all she cares about at this point. But she comes across as mostly benevolent in the game, which I liked because it's the less obvious way to go, rather than the scorned victim bent on revenge trope that we've seen in a million other things. Interestingly, Stephen King's Carrie is cited as part of the inspiration for this story, which is infamous for its bloody revenge scene. But I feel that Silent Hill focuses more on the girl with telekinetic powers who is tormented by her peers and an abusive religious fanatic mother aspect rather than the revenge aspect. Maybe that's just me, but that's how I saw Alessa when I played the first game, and so I was disappointed to see the movie in Origins taken in another and more obvious direction. Alessa was going to be named Asia after Dario Argento's daughter, but they didn't go with that, apparently because it's a quote, uncommon name. I'd say Alessa is less common, if anything, but whatever. Her name in Italian means Defender of Mankind, which is a fitting name for Dahlia to give her since she wanted her to birth God, which was supposed to result in bringing paradise. It could also be a reference to Alessa's preventing God from being born. Here's something I totally missed when I covered Silent Hill 4, because I honestly never even caught it while playing the game. The image on the Saint Medallion, the item that protects Henry from ghosts, has the same image of Saint Alessa that appears in a painting in Silent Hill 3. Considering how often I hear fans say that Silent Hill 2 and 4 don't necessarily take place in the same universe as 1 and 3, Silent Hill 4 sure references the first game a lot. So that's Silent Hill, the game that started it all. It was surprisingly hard to talk about, and I know this episode is relatively brief compared to my previous Silent Hill videos. I guess because for a long time I didn't think I was even going to make this video, so I ended up talking about the first game a lot when covering the sequels. So there wasn't much left after that. But yeah, this game was revolutionary for its time. Often imitated, never duplicated, as they say. Probably just about any game these days that has a dark and cerebral bent to it could be traced back to Silent Hill for at least part of its inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, I figured this would be a good time to talk about the sources that Silent Hill drew inspiration from that I haven't already mentioned. Aside from Carrie, there's also The Mist. I don't think I have to explain that one. Insert usual comment about how I still haven't seen this one, but I need to. An obvious one is Jacob's Ladder, which is really inspiration for the whole series to varying degrees. In the first, it's mostly that the wheelchair with a spinning wheel is similar to a bike with a spinning wheel. Then there's the fact that... How can I put this without spoiling anything? One of Silent Hill's endings borrows heavily from the movie's ending. Apparently the Gillespie house is modeled after a painting called Christina's World. The house in that painting depicts a real one, the Olsen house, which is in Maine, which is most likely where Silent Hill is meant to be. Also, the girl depicted in this painting suffers from paralysis, which could be seen as similar to how Alessa couldn't get out of bed for seven years. 
And of course there are lots of references to classic children's books since Alessa was a reader. Alice in Wonderland with a puzzle involving plates depicting various characters. Then of course there's a Wizard of Oz with Lisa's last name and a puzzle that involves collecting three keys that reference the characters. The various locked doors in Nowhere that are labeled Aratron, Bethor, Haggith, Ophiel, and Phaleg are named after five of the seven Olympian spirits mentioned in several Renaissance and post-Renaissance books of ritual and ceremonial magic. And this one is totally random, but apparently Midwich Elementary School is modeled after the school from Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. The list is actually pretty long. I mostly just picked out things I was at least partly familiar with, along with a few things that were just too interesting to leave out. Well guys, I guess that's about all I have to say about Silent Hill. Despite the fact that it looks dated and has a few flaws, like the voice work, it's definitely worth playing, if only for its significance and how it helped shape how horror was handled in video games. This feels kind of like the end of another era. I have now covered all Silent Hill games that I have been able to play, and of course both movies. And frankly, with how things are going with Konami right now, I don't have too much confidence that more games are going to get made. Silent Hill themed pachinko machines notwithstanding. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm done making Silent Hill related videos. There's also Silent Hill Arcade, which isn't really my cup of tea as far as gameplay goes, and it's mostly fan service as far as monster designs. But it does reference some of Silent Hill's history as it was established in earlier games, so I think it's worth talking about in that regard. Also, while not an official game, Silent Hill Alchemilla looks like it's worth playing and possibly talking about. I have not played it yet, but I plan to. And if the stars align themselves just right, maybe I'll find a way to check out some sort of translation of the Silent Hill play novel. I've always been interested in that one because it has a lot of little side stories and more endings. And there are also little cell phone games and such that are Japan exclusive. If I can dig up some info on those, that could be a subject for a video. And who knows, maybe Konami will sell off the franchise to some other company and more Silent Hill games will eventually get made. And even if they don't, I can always do editorials that touch on specific themes in the series and stuff like that. For the most part, Silent Hill has been really good to me and I'm not ready to cast it aside just yet, even if I only have a limited number of games to reference. And even though I don't consider this the end of my Silent Hill videos, I still get a certain feeling of finality with this one. So while I'm at it, I want to thank everyone who has kept up with all these videos. Sometimes it's been a serious pain trying to get these episodes done in time for October, hence why I had to settle for putting out a brief video about one of the movies a couple times, but I like that Silent Hill in October ended up being kind of a tradition. Sometimes it was practically the only video I did that year, so if nothing else it encouraged me to continue making videos even if I had to start a few months early and power through overtime at work and other life stuff that got in the way. If nothing else, I would always get some kind of Silent Hill video done for you guys that year. Also, I learned a lot about the games while looking up info for these videos. How else was I going to find out that James was named after Jack the Ripper and that Silent Hill 4 was inspired by a weird book called Coin Locker Babies? And of course, there's also all the cool people I've had the chance to get in touch with who I wouldn't have otherwise. While I love hearing from people that I help them get into Silent Hill with my videos, I got more into Silent Hill myself while making the videos for you guys, so in a way it's a two-way street. But I just want to say thank you for sticking with me so far. But I'm not done yet, so I hope you'll continue to stick around as I find more Silent Hill related things to talk about. That's it for now, see you next time.
This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? Monsters? They look like monsters to you? Must be on drugs. What the hell? You gotta be shitting me. <laughs>